वेरी गुड मॉर्निंग क्लास आई सोनाली नागर असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर नोएडा इंटरनेशनल यूनिवर्सिटी एंड टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू स्टार्ट द न्यू टॉपिक एंजाइम्स इन फूड प्रोसेसिंग नेक्स्ट स्लाइड एस वी ऑल नो अबाउट एंजाइम्स दे आर दी बायो कैटलिस्ट विच बेसिकली ऑल्टर द रेट ऑफ रिएक्शन बाय लोअरिंग द एक्टिवेशन एनर्जी एक्टिवेशन एनर्जी इज द एनर्जी विच इज रिक्वायर्ड फॉर अ रिएक्शन टू स्टार्ट नाउ again we have a definition here an enzyme is a biocatalyst that increases the rate of reaction without itself being changed in the overall process the main speciality of enzymes is that they never change during the process of a reaction secondly we have certain unique properties for enzymes like most enzymes are proteins but all proteins are not enzymes secondly they are highly specific exhibits enormous catalytic power fourth increases the rate of reaction lowering the re, uh, activation energy the last one they change only the rate at which the equilibrium is achieved next now here we can categorize enzymes into two general category first simple enzymes which is only amino acids second conjugated enzymes as the uh, as the name suggests that conjugated means it is attached with a cofactor also which is a non protein basically what happens that enzyme is as a whole known as hollow enzyme in which we have two parts one non protein second one protein part that particular protein part is known as the apoenzyme and both these when combined together makes an enzyme next slide now we have classification of enzymes we have uh, plenty of enzymes which are used nowadays in food industries as well as in other processes also we have oxy reductase which catalyzes the oxidation reduction reactions example is here peroxidase oxidase etc second one transferases as the name uh, says it transfers one group one molecule from one group to another then in uh, example kinases phosphorylases etc hydrolysis involves cleavage cleavage of bond by addition of water example phosphatases peptidases fourth one lysases lysases uh, catalyzes the cleavage of bond by means other than hydrolysis or oxidation here hydrolysis will not occur only the cleavage of bond will occur and the enzymes which are involved aldolases etc and basically what is happening here like formed either by elimination or formation of a double bond no action of water will be played over here in this next slide then we have isomerases uh, which involves the intramolecular rearrangement and yield isomeric forms basically in this what, hap what happens isomerization takes place and for that isomerases is the enzyme example mutases racemases then we have ligases ligases is a very common enzyme for dna also for dna ligation so it plays a role in ligation and attaching to molecules like carbon 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 sulfur carbon oxygen and carbon nitrogen bonds we have other molecules also which can be joined together with the help of this enzyme and the ligases example carboxylases then we have how enzymes operate as in the beginning i told that they are substrate specific all enzymes are substrate specific means they have a lock and key concept specific enzyme will go and combine with specific substrate this active site will go and combine with the another active site the proper reaction the desired product will be uh, given when active sites will combine then after uh, the combination of enzyme and substrate your product will be formed and enzyme will move away and it will not be changed next slide then we have use of enzymes in food processing 
in food processing industries we can see that plenty of enzymes are used nowadays we have pectin we have uh, uh, phosphatases lactases so many enzymes are there which can be used in the food processing now here is a term blanching what exactly blanching is all about what happens your fruits and vegetables contain naturally uh, you know uh, natural enzymes which sometimes create a kind of deterioration spoilage in your food so there is a need to inactivate those particular enzymes which are naturally present in your fruit or vegetable in your food product so that uh, your food uh, when your fruit or vegetable will be converted into any product that will not be spoiled so blanching is a hot uh, is a process where you can keep your fruit or vegetable in a hot water this is the slow heating process where inactivation of naturally present enzymes will take place then we have renin renin is basically extracted from the calves stomach and this is uh, used in the coagulation of milk during the pro uh, production of cheese next slide now Amylases, as the name suggests, uh, suggests amylases will act on carbohydrates, starches, etc. So the food which are used here and the purpose we have, baked good fermentation increases the sugar content for yeast, and this will uh, this will be uh, uh, presenting the proper raw material for the fermentation. Secondly, in brewing industries, we use this amylases where conversion of starch to maltose for fermentation, removal of starch. Turbidities. What happens that whenever a product comes, sometimes a turbid, a turbid appearance will be there. So that appearance can be removed and clarity can be brought by this enzyme which is known as your amylases. Then we have fruit juices properties like remove starches to increase the sparkling properties. Your fruit juices are very sparkled in appearance. That is also because of amylases because it acts upon the starches which is present there in your fruit juices also. Then we have chocolate cocoa. The liquidification on, in that uh, cocoa is because of the amylases. Next slide please. That free flow. Less viscosity will be there. Then cellulases. In, the, in uh, like uh, brewing cell walls, coffee beans, fruits. In all these we can use cellulases. What happens there in brewing? Hydrolysis of complex carbohydrate cell walls. We know that carbohydrate cell wall is very thick. So to dissolve that, to remove that, we use this enzyme cellulases. Then we have coffee beans, hydrolysis of cellulose during drying. What happens that we have this cellulose in coffee beans and when we use the cellulases, hydrolysis of that particular takes place during the drying process. In drying, water activity will be reduced. Then in fruits, like uh, removal of graininess of pears, Peeling of apricots and tomatoes. Tomatoes and the cellulases sometimes kept together so that they can be peeled off. Next slide. Then we have dextrin and sucrase. Sorry, dextrin and sucrase together. Here uh, the food is sugar syrup or ice cream. So this is basically used for the thickening. This, is act, this acts as a thickening agent. Thickening of syrups and thickening agent for ice cream also. Then we have invertase. Invertase is very common. It, uh, it is used there in artificial honey. Conversion of sucrose to glucose and fructose. This conversion occurs when this enzyme acts. Then we have candy. In candy what happens? Manufacture of chocolate coated soft cream candies. That softness and coated, uh, that, uh, coated softness comes with this enzyme which is known as your invertase. Next slide please. Now the next enzyme is lactase which is used there in ice creams or in milk. What happens that stabilization in food is very much required for the good appearance of that particular food. So that appearance, that good appearance can be brought by lactase by uh, preventing the crystallization of lactose in ice creams. So what is happening here whenever ice cream is there crystallization used to occur due to the presence of lactose. So to remove that crystallization, to prevent that, we use this enzyme lactase. In the same manner, milk also contains certain protein and for that protein, stabilization is required. Otherwise, those granules will be present there in milk. So that stabilization will again come with the help of this enzyme lactase. 
then we have pectin pectin is very common nowadays in food industries because it is used for the softening of the fruit and uh, for the clarification of wines that transparency uh, that transparent look comes due to the presence of this uh, enzyme pectin next slide then we have proteases okay whenever we are talking about enzymes we called out the name amylases lactases pectin we now we have proteases all these names are very well suggesting that on which substrate they are acting like amylases are acting upon starch your uh, phosphatases will be acting upon phosphate lactases will be acting upon on lac uh, on lactose in the same manner proteases will act upon amino acids or protein so what is happening here food item is cheese and proteases is used here for casein coagulation casein coagulation is very much important for the production of cheese because that casein and whey will be separated and that casein will ultimately be converted into your cheese so coagulation part is very much important that's why we use this proteases enzyme which very well brought about the coagulation of this then we have character characteristic flavors like during aging then meat and fish tenderization recovery of proteins from bones trash fish liberation of oils for all this we use this enzyme proteases then we have milk in preparation of soy milk we require this enzyme proteases so it's very well connected that how enzymes are very well beneficial in food processing next slide then we have lipases now the name is itself suggesting where it will be used it will be used upon lipids now cheese is the food product and milk purpose is aging ripening and general flavor characteristics which will be given by lipases then we have milk production of milk will uh, with slightly curd flavor for use in milk chocolate you must have seen milk chocolate you will find a bit curdled effect in that uh, milk and this is brought about by lipases that curdiness will be there due to the presence of lipases this is the specific enzyme for that then we have phosphatase which is used in baby foods and milk increases available phosphate phosphates because phosphate is very much important in dna also so it is very much important for your protein for your dna so we use this in baby foods then we have milk detection of effectiveness of pasteurization what happens that uh, pasteurization we know that uh, that is the 100 degree uh, the, that is the, we used to heat our milk below 100 degree celsius for the sterilization so what is happening there if phosphate will be present there it means your pasteurization is not proper and if that is completely off that means your pasteurization is uh, there it is well it is well settled and uh, you can say it is very well affected in that particular milk because phosphate is for phosphatase is the enzyme which will not survive at the higher temperature next slide now apart from all the all, all those uh, enzymes we have another enzymes also like nucleases peroxidases catalase glucose oxidase polyphenol oxidase thiaminase ascorbic acid oxidase so we have a very long list for all those enzymes for that you can refer certain books like fraser and uh, now today we are stop we are going to stop this lecture here itself and tomorrow we'll start with the next topic that will be your chilling effects thank you